My entitled in-laws are furious with me, complaining that they don't want to dress up for my Renaissance-themed wedding, claiming that I'm making everybody look like idiots all because I'm enforcing a dress code. And at this point, I'm not sure if I'm the jerk for asking people to dress a certain way at my wedding, because based on their reaction, I'm starting to seriously doubt myself. Here's what happened. I'm a 29-year-old female, and I'm getting married to my 30-year-old partner, and we've planned a fantasy and Renaissance-themed wedding. We are massive fandom nerds. We read books, we play video games, we love movies and comics, and we actually met at a renaissance fair and wanted that to be a part of our wedding. We discussed it with our close friends and everyone thought it was a great idea. So we sent out the invitations, plus an attached letter that explained why we wanted to have a themed wedding, and examples of the type of things that we wanted people to wear. We included photos, descriptions, budget categories that went from how to do it yourself, all the way to just straight out buying something online. We also asked people to reach out if they had any worries so that we could work something out. Well, I've received a few messages from my closer friends saying that they've heard other people, including some of mine and my partner's family members, calling me a bridezilla, saying that we're being unreasonable, that this is ridiculous, and that they don't want to go if I'm going to get all up in arms over clothing. My soon-to-be mother-in-law and sister-in-law are especially angry. I reached out to them after their names were mentioned, and they said I am ruining what is supposed to be a happy day by demanding people dress up like idiots. They said everyone should be allowed to dress in whatever way makes them feel comfortable, and I'm just being very controlling. My partner says not to listen to them, but there are so many people saying it. I'm feeling pretty hurt by all of this. I assume people would react like this if I said everyone needed to go out and spend hundreds on costumes, but we went out of our way to include pictures and suggest as many very low budget options as possible. I honestly don't think it was a big deal, but now I'm having having second thoughts about the whole theme wedding idea. Now, for some additional context, we put in the invitation that we don't expect or want people to buy us wedding gifts and would rather they keep their money for themselves or use it for the outfit. And one of the low budget options was things like a normal floral dress that many people already own with the addition of like a flower crown or a belt or something like that. And it went up from there. For more meticulous stuff, it was like a linen shirt with a piece of fabric tied around your waist or a belt. It's quite low key and I'm not super strict about any of it. I just didn't want anything like a cocktail dress or a formal suit and tie. Now excluding my sister-in-law and my mother-in-law, our closest family and friends haven't complained and several people have said they are looking forward to it. It's more so cousins or aunts and uncles or those types of level of friends who have also not contacted us directly but instead we're hearing about it through the grapevine. So honestly, am I the jerk for trying to have some kind of dress code at my wedding? What should I do? You are definitely not the jerk for having a dress code at your wedding. Like your mother and sister-in-law are just being so overdramatic, as well as anybody else who has like some serious problem with this. It is not unheard of that people would have a theme and a dress code for their wedding. Like that definitely happens all the time in every wedding around the world. And it really sounds like you've covered a lot of options that people can choose from if they're unsure of what to wear to the wedding. Like this really does sound like a simple thing that can be accommodated. And honestly, I don't know why they would make such a big deal out of it. And honestly, if you invited me to your wedding and you gave me these specific instructions for what to wear, I would have a lot of fun with it and I would absolutely show up. And it really seems like most people who are coming to your wedding kind of get that this is going to be a fun time. And this also feels way more memorable than anything else. Like sure, a suit and tie or even just like a formal dress is fun for a wedding every now and then. But like this clearly is something that's very unique. And I know if I was invited to this wedding, I absolutely would show up and have a great time. Like how often do you get to go to a Renaissance themed wedding? Like that sounds awesome in my opinion. So truly, I think your sister-in-law and your mother-in-law are just being very stuck up and they clearly just don't want to have fun because your idea of having a renaissance themed wedding sounds amazing and you are not out of line for having a dress code. If you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out, link down below in the description. Also, go to amithejerk.com slash submit if you would like to submit your own stories. My friend refuses to let me meet her boyfriend and yet is almost demanding that she be friends with my fiance. And even though I've discussed this with her several times, I still feel like I make no progress in understanding exactly why she's acting this way. Because at this point, I seriously don't know what to do. Here's what happened. So I met my friend back in 2019 during college. We were really good friends instantly and we had so much in common. But since then, life has moved on and we have both changed. And I really now just don't recognize her. The confident and bold girl I met isn't there anymore. My friend met her boyfriend back in 
2022, and it's been horrible ever since. She's told me that she thinks that he's cheating on her, how emotionally awful he is towards her, and the way that he screams at her, and he's even encouraged her not to take birth control. So, from what she told me, I never had a liking towards this guy. But they always break up just to get back together again, so this guy literally isn't going anywhere. My friend goes from crying over what he says and does, to being so happy in a state of euphoria. It's a constant up and down of emotions. I'm engaged to the person that I would love to call my soulmate. We have been together for two years, and when we first started our relationship, my friend told me how important it is that she befriends my fiancé and that they have a good friendship. Now, I agreed and included her in some of our hangouts, and there have been many times I told her to let her boyfriend join us. I thought it's unfair to judge a person I've never met before, and I should just give him a chance. My friend always pushed off the idea of a double date, or would say that we should do it but never follow through. I mean, I know she would even go on a double date with her co-worker, and I thought it was maybe because they had more in common because they worked together. I only met her boyfriend once and it was very awkward. We were going shopping, and she told me that her boyfriend texted her that he's cold at work. Well, she ended up buying a $130 jacket and we had to drop it off to him. Now, I tried to insist for her not to buy it just because of how expensive it is, but there was no getting through to her. She decided we had to drop it off at their work as they work at the same place. When we got there, she told me to stay in the car, but I felt stupid staying behind, so I told her that's silly and then I asked her if it really was a problem that I met this guy, but she kept arguing with me that I needed to stay in the car. He ended up coming out to us and I told her it's awkward if I stay here, so I ended up meeting him and he ignored her the entire time. He didn't thank her for the jacket and he kept trying to talk to me. He asked me about myself and what I'm ordering when we have dinner and trust me, it was very awkward. And then after that, my friend was crying in the car that he didn't thank her for the jacket and that he completely ignored her. For another example, I went out to dinner with her and her brother last Friday. She got into a bad argument with him and she was devastated. Like no matter how much we tried to help her, she was inconsolable. After an hour, her mood changed and all was fine again. She told us she's dropping off dinner for her boyfriend. And then when we got to his place, she parked away from his house and told us it's best that we stay here. But then her brother said that it's rude towards her boyfriend if we park away from his house. Like it could almost show that she's embarrassed of him or where he lives. She told her brother that he's right. And of course, we were told to wait in the car. For some additional information about me, my fiance and I have to do long distance for a bit due to visa reasons. We're doing the K-1 fiance visa, so he'll be back anywhere from August to December. We have been apart since June, but I do go and visit him during my work vacations. My friend constantly mentions that when my fiance comes back, we have got to go out on a double date. She said it so many times that I don't think she's excited for me for when it comes to my fiance to come back, but rather just for her boyfriend to come out with us. I have told her that I'm fine and happy to go out with them and explained it could take a while for my fiance to come back, but she insisted that she would rather wait. She said it the other night that my fiance needs to come home so we can double date. So I ask her, well, why can't it just be us? Why do we have to wait for him. She said that she would rather wait so that everyone could be completely comfortable. But I don't even know what that even has to do with anything. I'm perfectly fine and comfortable to go out with them. Like, I don't need my fiance to have fun. The other factor is that he won't come back until about six to eight months from now. My friend knows that, and when I tried explaining to her that it might take a while until he comes back, she just said to me, well, time moves fast, and before you know it, he'll be here. It just sounded stupid, so I didn't even try to carry on that conversation. Conversation. I am really confused. She always mentions wanting to double date just for it to never happen. They have been together for two years and I have never met this guy, but she puts such an importance on being friends with my fiance. She also double dates a lot with her coworker and their husband. And then she proceeds to tell me how amazing her double date was. I'm so tempted to ask her if she thinks that I'm an idiot and I really want to ask if she's embarrassed of me or her boyfriend. I just don't know why she makes a big deal to have a good friendship with my fiance, but I can't even hang out with her or her boyfriend. And at this point, I seriously don't know what to do. Okay, honestly, it really seems like the friend in this situation wants to go on double dates simply because there will be another man at that date. It sounds like her boyfriend is like a complete scumbag and he would happily ask out any woman in front of him instead of like focusing on his actual girlfriend. Like she probably just wants someone else around that is also a guy to try and keep this guy in check so he doesn't hit on you. Like that's my take at least, but it really does seem like he is not being faithful or he's just an awful
awful person altogether because their relationship does not sound healthy in the slightest. My sister lives with me and my fiance and she doesn't respect my home at all. And right now I'm at my breaking point dealing with her and I seriously don't know what to do. Here's what happened. So for a bit of background, my sister has lived with us for a few years. In June of 2023, we purchased our first home and before that we lived in a couple of different apartments and she lived with us then as well. And I really need advice on how to handle this situation in the best way, all without ruining my relationship with my sister and the rest of my family. For as long as I can remember, my sister has really struggled with keeping her room clean. It has gotten increasingly worse since she moved out of our parents' house and in with me. She cannot seem to keep it clean no matter what I did, and both my mom and I have tried talking to her about it, but she always has excuses as to why it's dirty. She is in college and has a job, but does not contribute financially. In fact, my parents pay for her to live with us. We supply anything that she could ever need to clean her room and her clothes, and she does not have to purchase detergent or anything else for that matter. Now, when I say dirty, I don't mean just clothes on the floor and clutter. She will leave food in her room and empty food containers or other food-related trash in her room for weeks. She will have cups that have grown mold from how long they are left in there. There are trash bags full of food-related items and trash in there a good majority of the time. If she left clothes on the floor, I really wouldn't be too concerned. My concern is having bugs in the house from all the food or even mold growing somewhere. She also will take food of mine and eat it and leave it in her room or go to bed and take my personal belongings from the kitchen and just never return them. I constantly find myself looking for things that she has taken and not returned. I honestly feel like it's extremely disrespectful and rude to behave that way, but I have tried to be understanding because I do think she is struggling mentally or has ADHD or some other disorder that is causing this. Anytime you try to talk to her about it, she just shuts down and doesn't end up cleaning or anything else. I have pushed for her to go to therapy for years, but you can't force someone to do something they don't care to do. It's gotten to the point where I have confronted my mom for help, and I even had her schedule a therapy appointment for my sister. So she finally has an appointment for June, and I'm hoping this will end up helping, but I'm just not sure that it will. I understand that it's my house and I make the rules or whatever, but I really have no leverage. I can't physically make her clean her room, and it seems like she is actively avoiding cleaning by making herself busy with other things. If I make her move out, her living situation will only get worse because I keep all the common areas clean. She is only responsible for her room and can't even manage that. I have cleaned her room for her in the past, only for it to be trashed just days later. I also clean the bathroom that she uses because it would be a filthy mess if not. Now again, it is my house, so I don't mind cleaning the bathroom so much, but I do feel like it would be common courtesy to at least try to keep it a little bit clean. I am getting increasingly frustrated, and I feel helpless in my own home. I have thought of removing her door from the hinges, but I don't think that is a healthy or mature thing to do, but I am just at a complete loss. I don't know what to do for someone that won't help themselves get the help that they need. I have offered to help her find someone to talk to or go with her and everything else, but she just keeps putting it off and it's now been years. And right about now I'm at my breaking point and I seriously don't know what to do. Okay, I seriously need to question a few things you said because you said, okay, it's my house, but I don't have any leverage. Like, what are you talking about? Of course you have leverage. This is your home. You have full control over who does and does not live here. And I'm not saying you need to kick her out or anything like that, because I think this is a nuanced situation that only you can figure out. But if she does want to live there, if I was in your shoes, I would lay some very basic ground rules. I would tell her that if her room isn't clean, then she's got to go. If she's not contributing to the household, then she also has to go. Like, there's no reason for you to be held hostage by your sister not cleaning her room. Like, are you just going to keep cleaning up after her for the rest of her life? And is she going to live in your house for the rest of your life? Because here's how I see it at least. She is not respecting your home in the slightest. She doesn't contribute financially despite having a job. And it sounds like the parents are bankrolling the fact that she gets to live with you instead of them. And based on the way she lives, I'm kind of seeing why that's happening. So in my opinion, I don't think it's unreasonable to set expectations for your sister who is a roommate. Because in my opinion, by doing nothing to try and get things figured out, you're no longer helping her, but instead enabling her. And in my opinion, you should not have to deal with that in the slightest. Would I be the jerk if I tell my friend that her son is not welcome to stay in my house unless he is responsible for himself? Because my last experience with him was very frustrating. And at this point, I seriously don't know what to do. Here's what happened. Okay, so for a bit of context, I'm a 
year-old female, and my best friend is a single mom with a 14-year-old boy. She has low contact with her parents because they kicked her out when she got pregnant in high school, so she does not have a big support system. We are really close, and I've always done what I could to help her. Her son is my nephew, not in blood, but in every other way that counts. She does everything for her son, and I honestly mean everything. He doesn't even pick up his plate from the table after he finishes eating. She just does it for him. While I personally don't think this is a good way to raise a child, I never gave her my opinion, and she never asked for it. It's honestly none of my business how she decided to raise her child, and I'm not a mom, so how can I give parenting advice? Last week, my friend had to take a two-day business trip and had another one scheduled for next week. She asked me if her son could stay at my house the days that she's out of town, because she doesn't feel comfortable leaving him in their house. I agreed, and he stayed with me for two days last week. Well, those two days were a frustrating experience for the both of us, because he kept expecting me to do everything for him, including packing his bag for school, picking up his clothing whenever he dropped them, serving him cereal in the morning, washing his dishes, and waking him up in the morning to go to school. He even blamed me because he missed the school bus because I didn't make sure that he woke up before his alarm rang. I mean, I heard his alarm, but I assumed he was awake. I am not eager to repeat this experience. I love that child, but he is too old for this, I think. Besides, I have a demanding job. I don't have the time or the energy to be the maid or babysitter of a teenage boy, even if it's just for two days. I'm thinking about telling my friend that if she wants her son to stay with me next week, he has to be responsible for himself. I can promise to cook him three meals a day and I can make sure he is up for school, but he needs to pick up his own clothing, pack his own bags, and wash his own dishes. Otherwise, he just can't stay. I don't feel this is unreasonable, but I kind of feel bad for putting down these conditions because she doesn't have a big support system. And if I don't let him stay at my house, it'll be really hard for her to find somewhere else to drop him off. So honestly, would I be the jerk in this situation? What should I do? No, I don't think you would be the jerk at all in my opinion. I think it's completely reasonable to set up some kind of expectations between you and this kid. Because at the end of the day, this is your house. You do set the rules and this is something that you can enforce. So going to the mom and saying, hey, it was fine having him for those two days, but if he wants to stay here again, then he needs to start pulling his weight. And honestly, I don't care how he's raised at home. If he is going to be staying at your house, then he has to go by your rules. Like, that's just common courtesy and it's kind of expected. If you're going to someone else's house, then you have to follow what they want you to do in their home. Because the way this 14-year-old was acting is completely inappropriate in your home. And there is no reason you should have to be his maid all because he doesn't want to do stuff. Am I the jerk for warning my friend about a co-worker of mine who only goes on dates to try and get free meals out of men? Because right now, my female co-worker is furious with me after she had to pay a $70 bill she was expecting my friend to pay. And at this point, I seriously don't know what to do. Here's what happened. I'm a 28-year-old male and I work with this woman that we will call Linda. Linda is not her real name. And let me just say that Linda has a very annoying habit. She has a dating profile that she uses specifically to lure guys in just to buy her expensive dinners at restaurants she wants to try and then she ghosts them. Linda brags about this all the time and is never interested in actually dating, but she'll act like it just to sell it. Now, I can't stand this because it's obviously playing with people's hearts, but Linda thinks it's a life hack to try food or drinks she otherwise couldn't afford. My friend we will call Donald, Donald is not his real name, is also on dating sites, but he is there for the right reasons. His late wife passed away a few years ago and he has just started jumping back into the dating scene. Donald is a very sweet guy and I really want him to find a great lady. A few days ago, he texted me asking if I knew Linda because wouldn't you guess it, they matched up and got to talking about work, which is how he found out we worked at the same place. So I told him all about Linda's BS with a restaurant thing and made it very clear to him that he would do best to drop things with her early on. Donald said that he would probably still do the date but asked for separate checks. Well, they went out this past weekend and on Monday, Linda came into work very upset. I asked her how the date with Donald went and she ripped into me. She was asking me if I was the one who told him not to pay for her dinner. Apparently, she had Donald take her to a high-end steakhouse and she ended up splurging. She got a drink, a full entree with a side and dessert, whereas Donald ended up just getting a sandwich and a salad. Her bill alone came out to about 70 bucks and she was almost in tears at work as she didn't expect to pay for it and now her car was low on gas. Now, I got a little upset too as she tried to use my friend as a literal meal ticket, but somehow she doesn't see it that way. Donald told me later that the date was going kind of well until he asked for separate checks. 
sucks because then suddenly Linda got very weirdly cold. Now Linda's mad at me because I told someone about her little tactic and it backfired on her. I don't feel I did anything wrong since it was a grieving friend I was protecting, but some other people we work with said that I should have stayed out of it because it was none of my business. So I need to know, am I the jerk in this situation? What should I do? There's no way you are the jerk in this situation. Linda finally got exactly what she deserved. She was using guys just to try and get some kind of free meal out of their date. She didn't care about dating at all. She just wanted free food from pretty much anybody around her. Like, that is really messed up, and you can't just do that to people and expect to get away with it. Like, if I was in the original poster's shoes, I would have told Donald immediately as well. Like, I would not want this very nice guy to get screwed over by this lady who's just using him. And I love the fact that she racked up a $70 bill for dinner. Like, this is karma working its magic in a beautiful way. So no, you're definitely not the jerk. Anyone who says that you are the jerk is completely wrong. And in my opinion, Linda got exactly what she deserved. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist at the top of the description. And if you want some chill music to put on in the background, check out easymode.com. If you like Am I the Jerk, subscribe to Am I the Genius. Everything will be linked down below in the description.